Welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to part two of our 80th anniversary of the Tiger build. Uh, and in this second part, we're going to start by looking um, at the diorama base that I've chosen for this. Um, so we have here a um, mini art kit 36027, and, and actually, this is two of their diorama kits brought together um, to make one larger one. So you can buy um, this building and this building separately. Um, as separate kits and then they put them together to make this bigger one. Now they must have designed this to go together right from the off because the, the two base halves um, meet together almost perfectly. Uh, well uh, in fact they do meet together perfectly you just need to, to fill them which you'll see in a minute when we have a quick look at the parts. So let's start with the instructions. So this is our uh, instruction set and what we've got is some A4 black and white pages um, that are stapled together here at the top uh, and they actually look like um, photocopy. Um, they're not in the same standard as their other kits, their vehicle kits where you get a nice glossy colour um, presentation. Uh, what we've got is uh, a photograph, which is the one used on the box art um, in black and white here. Um, it tells us that we've got a country diorama in 135 scale, um, and it gives us our um, kit number. And then at the bottom, we've got some images of um, some of the sprues. Um, um, and then we've got um, a bit of a key and then in this box here it tells you that there is um, uh, some information um, and uh, wider building instructions on their website. Now um, I've looked at their website and um, they have some YouTube videos um, uh, embedded in the website which takes you through the process for building it um, and I have to say um, that they're, they're fairly thorough, but it's not quite the same as building um, a, a, a diorama from start to finish, step by step. But it will get you where you need to be. Um, so this is very much a uh, indication of how to construct it, but doesn't take you through all the techniques you're going to need um, to um, get this correct. In fact, if you built this and you had ignored that and you just built it as per the instructions, you're going to have um, a number of issues. So it's important you have a look at the website or indeed you follow my videos and, uh, and understand how this comes together. Let's flick over the page. So we're straight into the build. So what, what they're showing you here is only um, their standard um, generic parts. So if you buy any of their dioramas, you'll get these parts with it. You'll get the gutter in, um, you'll get this um, section with various different windows and shutters uh, uh, and doors and gates, um, and then you'll get this um, different type of door. These are all pretty much included in, in all of their kits, and it gives you some options I guess. Right so step one they're having us build up the gutter in. Um, so we've got uh, the the down pipes there, um, the um, outlet and then we've got the actual guttering along the top. Um, it's showing you here how to build the, the little small window, how to build up the uh, barn style um, door with the hinges and separate handles, so it's quite detailed. Um, then it's showing you how to build up the walls. Now, all of the um, walls in their buildings um, are doubles, uh, so you've got an outside face and an inside face, so you can very much do a full interiors in these buildings if you want to. Um, then we've got uh, building the fence post, building the fence, 
and um, building a larger section of fence, same principle, just short and long. Um, and then, um, so that's 11 steps, but what they're not showing you in here is how to cut this out, because there's actually a particular way to cut this out. Um, and then if you flip over, um, they're taking you, having built up those walls, um, you're then constructing the walls together, putting a roof on it, uh, then you've got ridge tiles along the top of the roof, um, and then we're on to assembling those um, fence components, adding, adding your guttering, and um, with a little bit of creativity, you can manipulate all of this so you can have broken guttering, you could have broken fences with a little bit of um, work. Uh, they have the, the brickwork on the top there so that if you wanted tiles missing, it's, it's possible, it's doable with a little bit of work. And then we have the assembly, placing the building in, in place. Uh, adding the window and door and your fence there. Now, if you are buying this particular diorama on its own, this is where your instructions would stop and you basically have one sheet with all this printed double-sided. Um, so the instructions for the second building then kick in and it's the same process, uh, front and back facing walls brought together. So uh, inside facing always goes on the, uh, always it's inside the outside facing as in it's slightly smaller um, then you've got um, more windows being made up it's showing you which ones we've got um, more fence this time different I think that might be the gate actually then we have um, a floor section which might be going halfway up Possibly. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, a wall section. Roof section. Um, door in the door frame. Um, so if you wanted to model that open, you'd have to do a little bit of work. But it does have a, have a, has a door frame. Has a handle, uh, which is a similar style to the uh, shed. So you might want to do something different with that possibly. Um, then we've got um, another roof section, it's telling you to do two of those. Yeah, and two of those, so you've got four sections of roof because of this change of camber. Um, we're building up the lower section of the building, adding the roof, and you can see you could put people inside here so you could view them through the windows and the doors. You, you've got um, a floor there to allow you to do that so you could have children watching the soldiers with the tank or whatever your diorama is. Uh, we then add the windows and the doors at the end. Uh, this one comes with a little step and some more fence section um, and we pull all that together on that base and then you put the two bases together. Only that's not what you do at all. The first thing you're gonna do is put your bases together. Okay, let's have a look at the parts and take you through what we get in the kit. So as is Mini Arts where you get everything um, all in one big cellophane bag, um, and when you split it open, you've then got quite a lot of uh, plastic parts to go through, but these are all big parts. So as we've seen in the instructions, it's not heavy on part count, they're big parts, and they all need dealing with one way or another. So let's start with, we have our two bases. Um, and you can see here, if I take this one, this is the one for the um, the base for the uh, like barn. Um, and you can see it's a decent sized base. And if I take my tank, Tank will fit on there comfortably. Um, now the reason why I bought a double one is because um, we've got an overhang of gun and then I've got figures, so I, I need a little bit more space than just one. But you can see, you know, that the, the tanger's a tiger is a hefty old vehicle, so 
you've got plenty of space on here um, for whatever you might want to do. Um, and you can clearly see um, we're marked out where the building is, where the fence is. And actually, this is really thick material for uh, vac formed. It's really, really good quality. Um, it's not at all flimsy uh, as some vac form is. Now, that's to, not to say that it's strong enough to be a base in its own right, and we'll, we'll come back to that. So what we've got um, on this base is we've got some rough ground. Um, we've got um, a, a relief there for placing the um, fence. We've got a relief there for the walls. We've got um, a stone floor, uh, which leads onto a cobbled uh, pavement, which follows around the side of the building. Uh, we've got then curb stones. Um, we've got uh, a cobbled gutter and then a cobbled street. And the cobbled street is actually herringboned. You can see the middle of the street there is herringboned. Um, and if we look at this one, um, exactly the same now. Um, we've got a, what will ultimately be a path because we're going to put a, a gate there. Um, and we don't have an entrance out because we put a step in. Um, but effectively, otherwise, it's the same. And when we come to join the two together, like so, you can see how that runs really perfectly. Um, once we've joined these together and, and filled it all in, it will look superb. Now, there is another option here. Mini art are clever, is what mini art is. If I line it up this way, and they don't tell you this, but here we go. If I line it up this way and get it perfectly square, all of these centre bricks marry up with each other. And so actually what I can do is I can have a full width road, um, a building on each side, um, both of them having some form of um, rough area next to them. And with the full lit, lit road, you get this herringbone strip through the middle and two sides of the road. That gives you a lot more space for your tank if that's what you want to do. So that's quite a nice little way of, of presenting. It gives you more space all the, all the way around your vehicle. Um, and it's going to give you a, a different perspective, and we will come back to that in a minute. Um, so let's look a little bit more closely at the bases. So the, the, the base detail is really, really nice, and once we've primed this and we've painted the individual stones in and given it all a wash, uh, I have a particular technique for... Um, cobblestones which really brings them to life so unlike the picture that is shown by uh, mini art with all of these being gray and then given a wash i ain't gonna do that uh, i think we can do something uh, to really pop these out what you will see um on this um and I'll see if i can find you some uh yeah so if you look closely you'll see there's a little lump on the curbstone there, and then there's another one there, and then there's another one there, um, and there's one on the brick there, um, and we'll probably see even more, there's another one there. You'll probably see them even more clearly when we come to the building. These little raised nubs are actually um, part of the process of vac forming and shouldn't be there so we are going to have to remove all of those and fill so there is more work on the base than you might imagine um, but yeah that is our bases so that's our starting point okay the next part out of my box um, has um, a number of different sections on them so what we've got here is the wood floor that goes in the house uh, two of the sections of the roof, um, two um, strips here, which I think are for the roof construction, 
Um, and then we've got this, which I think slightly smaller. I think that goes in there and forms um, like a plastered ceiling uh, for underneath that. I think that's how that works. And you can see, because this is all vac formed and formed in, we've got to cut these pieces out. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, you can see here, though, we've got these little nubs quite clearly. You can see on the end there, we've got these little tabs, and they need just removing and sanding off. They're on all the corners. We've got them on the roof as well, so you do have to hunt them out um, and just whip them off. But the, the wood grain is lovely, so if you want to leave that floor wooden and give it a wash, um, that will look really nice as well. Um, and the roof is done quite well with um, some broken tiles and some loose tiles, and it's quite a, a crooked roof, really, uh, denoting that it's been on for a little while. So those are some really nice parts. So when you clean it, these up and uh, paint it, it's going to look stunning. Well, out of our box, we've got another section of floor, um, which, again, is very nicely done. We've got our uh, front door step. Uh, which looks like three pieces of stone put together. Um, and then we've got our um, section of wood for the back of the gate, uh, the gate, fence section, um, supports for the back of the fence, and the fence posts, which are two halves that you're going to have to put together. Um, and obviously, um, when you put this on, this isn't going to look great from the back so we might have to think about what we want to do about that or even if we want to replace that but I quite like the look of that it depends on how we're going to do the base what we might end up doing with that. So we have um, a wall section um, and this is um, an inside section and an outside section they may not be um, for this they're not in fact they're not for the same bit of wall so that would go inside a different piece of wall uh, and you can see we've got some nice plaster texture we've got brickwork um, and we've got stone at the bottom all nicely done and uh, we've got one two three nubs four nubs to take off certainly all the corners um, so every time there's a turn you've got one of these little nubs that we're going to have to remove and on the inside we've also got a slight texture look like plaster which is um, smoother than the outside one got some outside walls for the um, house now um, so we've got the uh, the main front and one of the side walls there um, you can see we've got stonework around the the windows and doors so it's a different impression to what we're getting from the barn which has got the brick the brickwork um, you can see we're going to have to cut out the windows and things and you can see we've got some of these nubs in various places so um, that, that there is some work to get this where you want it to be before you can start painting it but again the texture on the front wall is really really nice and once you give that a wash it will really really stand out um, yeah, quite a big part. It's probably the biggest single part. More building parts, uh, this time uh, for the barn. So we've got the front and inside faces. Um, and again, a sort of plastered look. I, I Personally, I think on the inside of the barn, they could have, could have done brick. Um, but uh, there you have it. We've got a, quite a nicely presented exterior with a combination of brick and plaster. Um, and an opening there for the window and the door. Uh, then we've got another um, side wall, inner and outer section, and these are the ridge tiles. And you can see on each one of the ridge tiles, we've got a nub that's going to have to be um, removed and uh, filled and sanded. So uh, a bit of work to get it where you want it to be, but should look really nice when done. Next out is fence parts. Um, and we've got here two sections of fence as we saw in the instructions another two fence posts and the little um, support struts that go along the back there uh, the short ones and then the two longer ones um, nicely done in terms of the detail the texturing there 
I think they'll look really nice when pulled together. Okay, next out is uh, another um, roof section, and this time it's um, a, a different pattern, so it's nice that we'll have those contrasts when we build our diorama, and we've got the bricks there that go on top of the wall, um, which are uh, nicely done. Um, so I have this nice diamond pattern. These look a bit more uniform and, a, and it to be in better condition actually than the house roof, which is interesting. But um, this yeah. is the last of our vac form part. So uh, we've already seen similar parts. We've got another two uh, sections of roof and, and the parts that go with that. Uh, we've got some more fence supports, ridge tiles, including a, a separate ridge tile. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember seeing that in the in the instructions. And then we've got an, another section of um, inner and outer wall. Um, seems to have a bit of a, a larger sink mark in that. We might might choose to fill that. I don't know. I'll have to see when we come. Uh, generally, we'll probably prime it and make decisions based on that primer. There's a little bit of... Uh, an issue there where the, the vac forming process hasn't quite worked properly and we've got some material that's bubbled up through there. So we've got a bit of clean up on this one, but otherwise everything else has been really crisp and, and nicely presented. Um, and I think some people worry about vac form, um, but hopefully we will show you how to handle it and then you, you won't need to worry about it. Is our gutters, and as, as I've said before, this is a standard sprue that they use with all of their buildings. So it doesn't matter if you're in Russia or France or Austria, you're going to have the same uh, style of guttering. So you can make your own mind up on, on what you want to do with that. Because this particular tool gets absolutely hammered, and I think probably... Um, you can see it's been cut off. They probably have several of these made on one tool being stamped out at a time. It, the, you do get quite a bit of flash on this, and probably because the tool's got a bit worn now, I would think, but um, uh, several of these that I've got, and they're all the same with, with quite a bit of uh, flash. Um, but plastic is nice and hard. It's nice and rigid, and, and actually the parts themselves are nicely formed. Um, you do have a little bit of a lip on there and you've got all the mounting points in there as well. So um, it'll look quite good and you can use as much of that as you like and uh, present it how you like as well. So we've got the outlet there, which is which is suitably hollow. And then we've got the downpipe, uh, the main gutter in there. And then we've got um, some more sections of pipe so you can change the length of that. Uh, and you can decide whether you're putting that on the barn or putting it on the, the house, to be quite honest. Next up, we've got this um, barn door. And this is a good, thick, chunky piece of plastic. Um, we've got um, individual planks with little tiny, don't know if you can pick them up, little tiny uh, fastener heads, which go in the line of the, the uh, reinforcement on the back there. Um, and we've got them top and bottom, so um, that's nicely thought out. Obviously, once we paint it, it'll stand out a little bit. And then we've got the hinges. Um, I, I would say the hinges were a little thick, um, but what you could do is just sand them flat and make them a little thinner um, if you wanted. You, you know, fo photo etch for that bit would probably look quite nice, but um, uh, they're, they're not massively overdone. Um, but they're quite they're quite generic, and again, um, you'll get the same hinges and the same door for multiple different uh, buildings in the range. And then we've got this sort of quite basic looking handle, and the gate goes onto attaches onto the handle in, in such a way that you've got to remove it carefully and do a fair bit of sanding back. But um, will look fine when it's done. As you can see, it's quite a bit of flash to clean off off that. Again, because it's a part that's that's used for multiple uh, dioramas, this gets uh, this tooling gets used a lot. And then the last three sprues are all the same, and again, it's the same approach. They have a standard sprue that they apply with all their buildings. So let's put two of them away. 
Um, and as actually, as I look at them, the flash and stuff is all in the same places, so we know it's come out of the same tooling. So what we've got, we've got uh, window frames of different types and sizes for different buildings, so you will have some spares when you finish with this. We've got um, little short, like, um, gates or split, split opening door there. Uh, we've got a generic front door with um, handle. See, we've got some raised um, eject pin marks on the back of the door, but because they're raised, they're easy to get rid of. And if you use that as the inside door with no intention of doing an interior, then um, they won't bother you at all. The frames are nicely done. You have a little recess. Um, so obviously you could put some acetate and, and what have you in there, which isn't supplied in the kit. And then we've got shutters. So uh, louvre shutters like you might get in France or somewhere like that. Um, again, a little bit flashy, but actually the parts themselves are very nice. Um, more windows, so maybe for the shuttered windows, we have some iron railing there so if we wanted to swap the fence out for iron railing we could although i would say that was more western european than eastern european and again some ejector pin marks that we're going to have to clean up as well as a bit of flash um, and then we've got the door handles at the bottom there so you get three of those um, which is to allow you to get all those windows done that we've got across the both buildings thing I want to show you is um, some parts that actually came with the figures. Now, I sent the figures off to, to uh, Gavin, and he's doing a tremendous job with that, but they came with various tools and bits and pieces, and I just wanted to, to show you those. Now, the actual rod that's provided for um, cleaning the gun barrel, um, uh, what I got um, has been sent to, to Gavin, but the, there wasn't a lot of it, but... If you'll remember in the first video when we went through the um, actual kit, there was a, a section of brass tube. Uh, and if we don't cut that up, we can use that. And that should hopefully align the figures quite well because I know he will have aligned their hands. So I'm hoping it will all come good. But we will build the diorama around the figures ultimately. So um, the... Uh, set of figures if you've not seen them go and check out Gavin's channel he's done um, uh, a couple of videos now showing showing those figures um, but they are um, basically uh, maintaining the vehicle so you've got um, um, five figures a full crew three of which are involved with cleaning the uh, uh, barrel of the gun and other two sort of lazing about I guess in casual poses I think Gavin said um, so we've got here um, which came with it. We've got a toolbox, um, which has got um, lids and open sides and things like that that we can sort out. And we've got um, we've got side pieces there, so we can do it open, um, and we can do a closed one. So we'll have two boxes in total. And just look at the detail on that. Typical mini art. Uh, really, really nicely done. The detail is great. Um, and then we've got some um, hand tools. So uh, you're going to love this. Um, we've got screwdriver there. The handle, the wood handle for the screwdriver is separate. And we're going to paint that and then add it on separately. Wowzers. We've got pliers. Um, we've got um, tin snips. We've got some form of wrench. Uh, we've got... Uh, some form of spanner there. Uh, we've got a hammer, um, another uh, couple more sort of socket um, re uh, socket spanners. Um, so we've got all sorts of little bits and pieces there. Um, we've got a couple of um, buckets. Um, we've got which seem to be slide molders to me. Um, we've got a bucket with, an, uh, with a separate bottom, um, so we could actually put some resin in there and, and, and put some liquid in there of some type. Now, we all know when you get one of these envelopes that we're getting a bit of photo etch, 
I also put a couple of small parts in there which had cut off Gavin's uh, sprues. So I've got a little spanner and a lump hammer. And then in here we have we have some photo etch which is for the toolboxes. So it looks like we've got a photo etch lid for this open one. And then we've got the sort of the open brackets that we stick on the side there to show that this has been opened up. So that's interesting. Yeah, that's that should be really nice. And then we've got a whole variety of little spanners and another screwdriver for, for its wooden handle. All sorts of little parts there. And that is it. So we've got some additional parts which are going to help populate our diorama a little bit.